So far, we've seen plenty of different EVs, from futuristic ones to fast ones to those that just look like any other car. But for EVs to really succeed in the marketplace, you need range, not the distance one. We'll get to that in a bit. Not every EV has to be a big crossover or have so much power that it rips off your face. Some should just be fun and cute. This is the Aura Good Cat from the Chinese company Great Wall Motors. Cute name, adorable little car. But is this cool cat actually good enough? Eh, 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 eh? Let's, let's go and find out. Wait, before we continue with the video, I have an important announcement to make. Surgeon Joe is hiring! We are looking for driven, like-minded individuals to join our growing team. But wait, you might be wondering, why would I want to work here? Well, let me show you. You get to work here with some of the most incredible creatives. You get access to incredible studios like this and all of this cool equipment. I'm trying to work here, can you get out of here? What the? You also get free parking. So, are you interested? Hit the link below to see what positions we have available. First, a bit of housekeeping. This car wasn't loaned to us by GWM, but from the subscription service Flux. The company is offering several of the latest EVs, including this good cat, the BMW iX, the Mini Cooper SE, and the Hyundai Kona Electric. You can even drive a Tesla. You can subscribe to any of these cars for as long or as short as you want. And you can switch to another EV or even a petrol car at any time. Insurance, road tax and maintenance are all taken care of. And there's also a door-to-door -door service that will deliver the car to you and take it to service right from your doorstep. The Aura Good Cat is the first car introduced as part of the GWM relaunch. Aura, in case you're wondering, is a sub-brand of GWM, just like Haval. Pricing starts at 139,800 ringgit for the 400 Pro model, the 400 representing the amount of claimed range. That makes it the cheapest electric vehicle in Malaysia today, undercutting the Hyundai Kona Electric by more than 10,000 ringgit. This one is the top of the range model. This is the one with the magical 500 kilometers of range. But can it really achieve that? This is one of the things we want to find out in this review. Let's cut to the chase. You're here for the looks, aren't you? In a world where everyone's leaning towards aggressive SUVs, it's refreshing to see a small hatchback EV, and an adorable one at that. The big round eyes give it an expressive face, and when you combine it with the rounded curves, you get a design that's very similar to a certain sports car brand from Stuttgart. That's not really surprising given that the Aura Good Cat was styled by a former Porsche designer. Kind of looks like a Taycan cross turismo that's been squished, but in a good way. I like it. Where the good cat differs from the norm is at the back. Now, you may be wondering, where are the taillights? Is it the ones at the bottom? Nope, they're right here, imprinted in the rear windscreen. The ones at the bottom light up when the tailgate is open, so the car remains visible at night. One more thing, this particular unit is finished in beige with a brown roof, and I'm not really a fan. Kind of looks like a naked mole rat, don't you think? Me personally, I would go for the green one with the white roof. My girlfriend likes this colour though, so it does have that going for it. If you want either the beige or green, you'll have to pay extra for this 500 Ultra, priced at 169,800 ringgit. You can still choose the normal colours however, which include red, white, black and a pastel blue. The colour scheme continues on the inside, where you'll find nice leather-like trim in either brown or green. It's matched to a light interior that really helps make the car feel bigger than it is. Although, good luck keeping it clean. The good news is that the good cat feels solidly built. Despite over 14,000 kilometres of what must surely be hard use, the car still feels tight as a drum. This is a huge relief. 
given that China doesn't exactly have the best reputation when it comes to build quality. The only thing I don't like is this center console, which is finished in this sort of beige color. It looks quite cheap, especially when you consider that the USB ports and the 12 volt charging socket cover is painted in black. That's not a good look. Other cars have this area finished in black and for a very good reason. Dirt gets everywhere here and if you spill something in the cup holders, you're going to have a hard time cleaning it up. The unique colours are nice, but I think on balance, I would prefer the usual black interior. Still, everything looks nice in here, with lots of chrome detailing and these mini-style toggle switches. You can clearly see where the designers have taken their inspiration from. The seats are also very comfortable. The driver's seat is electrically adjustable, and there's even a welcome function that slides the seat back so you have more room to get in. Rear legroom is pretty good too, although headroom is a little tight for taller passengers. Where the good cat suffers is in terms of boot space. There's just 228 litres back here, which is less than you'll find in a Perdua Myvi. And there's no real underfloor storage, meaning that the charging cables have to fight for space with the rest of your luggage. There's no front boot either, so the rear boot is all you get. The first thing you notice when you're driving this or a good cat is it gets all the basics done right. It doesn't make a lot of power, the front motor only makes 141 horsepower and 210 Nm of torque, so it's not going to rocket forward like you would in a Tesla. What it does do is make full use of its 141 horses. It feels much faster than the figure suggests and it uses its instant torque delivery to get up to speed very quickly. During our testing, the good cat managed to accelerate from 0 to 100 km an hour in 9.25 seconds. That doesn't seem fast, but it's more than adequate for daily driving. The top speed is limited to 160 km per hour. As you'd expect from an electric car, the Aura Good Cat is reasonably quiet. There's of course no noise coming from the motor, and there's quite good sound insulation as well, especially from wind noise. There is, however, a little bit of road noise coming from the tyres. What this silence does do is amplify some of the noises coming from other parts of the car, things that you wouldn't normally hear. Sometimes when you're stopped, the car makes a sort of whirring noise from the back, and when you're using the adaptive cruise control, when the car is braking, it does make a sort of clicking noise from the front. So it's not exactly a noiseless experience. That's something you do have to get used to. As with most EVs, the Aura Good Cat comes with a one-pedal driving mode. However, the braking force isn't strong enough for daily driving. I found myself having to press the brake pedal when reaching a red light. Also, the function has a tendency of switching itself off at random times, which is a little disconcerting. This may be due to the buggy software. We'll get to that later. As for the ride, the Aura Good Cat is a little bit firm. It's not quite as crashy as you'd find in the Volvo XC40 that we've previously driven, but over some rough roads, it does get a little bit bouncy. Thankfully, once you get up to speed on the highway, it does smoothen out and it gives actually quite a comfortable ride. But you just have to bear in mind that when you're on a rough road at lower speeds, it can get a little bit uncomfortable. Now as for the handling, there's really nothing to write home about. You might think that the car this small would be quite agile, but while the battery is positioned quite low in the floor, giving this car quite a stable handling, it isn't nimble. The steering is a little bit numb, it's not quite as sharp as you'd want them to be, and the car also rolls quite a bit in the corners. The soft springs also make the car dive quite hard under braking, especially considering that this car has quite sharp brakes. So if you're driving on say a twisty road and you're accelerating and braking quite frequently, if you have passengers, do beware because they might feel sick. Okay, so the Aura Good Cat isn't a stellar performer in the corners. This isn't that sort of car. But for everyday use, aside for the slightly bumpy ride at low speeds, it really isn't too bad. In terms of safety, the range-topping good cat comes with all the driver assistance you could ever want. Things like autonomous emergency braking, adaptive cruise control, and lane centering assist that will help take the strain out of highway driving. In stark contrast to the Volvo XC40 that I drove, the systems work 
very well. The car behaves predictably when accelerating, braking and turning, meaning that I can trust it to drive long stretches by itself. Whereas in the Volvo, I got fed up and simply turned the systems off. In the Aura, I kept them on. That's a huge win. One that banishes the perception that Chinese cars are not safe. Range is a major selling point of the good cat and um, we need to talk about that. The car comes with two battery options. The smallest version has a capacity of 47.8 kilowatt hours, providing a claim range of 400 kilometers. This ultra model has a 63.1 kilowatt hour battery, which GWM says delivers 500 kilometers of range. That seems optimistic, given that the battery is quite a bit smaller than what you find in the Volvo XC40 EV and the Hyundai Ioniq 5, both of which can only go a maximum of 430 kilometers on a single charge. The thing you have to remember is that GWM uses the outdated NEDC cycle for measuring range, which is more lenient. The others use the more stringent WLTP cycle. In reality, you'd be lucky to hit 400 kilometers at most, and that's with the bigger battery. Still, that range is more than good enough for driving in the city, and even a little bit beyond. I managed to drive to Malacca, a distance of 147 kilometers, most of it on the highway, where EVs are least efficient. I then managed to drive another 45 kilometers to the new Jintari charging station in Pedaslingi, and still had another 80 kilometers of range left. In most situations, the good cat should easily travel well over 300 kilometers. Speaking of the Jintari station, the Aura Good Cat isn't able to take advantage of the 180 kilowatt DC fast chargers over there. In fact, the car's DC fast charging maxes out at 60 kilowatts, meaning that charging the Good Cat from 0 to 80% takes 40 minutes. As for AC charging, the Good Cat is only able to accept a miserable 6.6 kilowatts. That means that even with a wallbox charger, a full charge takes 10 hours. You may have noticed that we haven't talked about the software, and that's because it's by far and away the worst part of the car. It all looks good on paper. You get a decent 10.25 inch touchscreen, Apple CarPlay, and a 360 degree camera with a 3D view of the car. And you can even change the color of the car. There's even the massage function, which is surprisingly good. The thing is, it seems that nobody has given this layout any real thought. It's as if someone just stuffed the car's settings up their nose, sneezed, and just left it like that. I mean, why is the massage function buried in the vehicle settings? Then there are the aircon controls. Yes, like everything else these days, the good cat puts them in the screen, which is annoying enough. Worse still, the icons are very small and easy to miss. But the most infuriating thing is, is that when you open CarPlay, the whole aircon bar just disappears. Why? Why can't I just have it open all the time? Now I have to go to the menu, press the Aura button, and then I can change the aircon controls. Quite stupid, right? That wouldn't be so bad if CarPlay in the Good Cat is as fast as in any other car. But somehow, there's a delay that creeps in whenever you use Google Maps or Waze. Sometimes it can take more than a minute after tapping the screen before it actually responds. It's so bad that I've missed turns because the map showed me as being further back than I actually was. All of this is made worse by the fact that everything is controlled by the screen. Take for example, the steering assist. It's great and all, but there are times where I want to turn it off and I can't do that on the actual steering wheel. Why? When there's a blank button right here. Yes, I know we tend to nitpick a lot when it comes to tech. I know that a lot of what we say when we review something is based on personal preference, but that's not the case here. This is objectively bad UI design. You will hate it. And that is such a shame because I really wanted to like the good cat. It just looks so cute and cuddly. And the rest of the car really is as good as the name suggests. It's got a decent amount of range, it's powerful enough for most journeys, it's decently comfortable, and most importantly, it's packed full of toys. 
all of this might tempt you into getting the good cat. And I can totally see why. But unless you really don't care about the tech, you might want to save on the headache and just buy the Hyundai Kona Electric. Trust me, you don't need that kind of stress in your life. Thank you so much for watching this review of the Aura Good Cat. I want to know, what do you think? Let us know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. Stay awesome. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.